Yo, this is the Thick Daddy Uptown, Andy Brown, and you're listening to the Three Count Podcast. One, two, three. Ah. Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want to ride with me? I'm in the club, baby, grind Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast. presents now I'm Wayne Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain to go wrestling. And by now, after season five, you know... 300 and something is episodes, right? I would just hope you say it with me. I am your Sherpa because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently. You can't. That's why I said about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So who's entering the ring today? You can find this person at Wrestling Open. You can find him at Labor of Love. You can find him at Grind. You can find him at Pro Wrestling R E T U W A W Beyond and CCW. He's a bad man with a fun attitude. He only goes down because he stays uptown. And then he is the Thick Daddy, Andy Brown. <laughs> Oh, that was fantastic. Thanks, man. I appreciate that intro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yo, so I want to open this up like full transparency, right? We actually met in Delaware, um, actually at 1CW. CCW Delmi was working. Oh, and, that's, uh, right, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we were all there like chatting it up. And I remember talking to Rip and telling him, I was like, yeah, dude, I'm actually moving to Massachusetts here in a couple months. And Rip was like, what? And then I remember he used to sit there like, you're going to fucking love it, Massachusetts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty much, I, I remember that. I was wilding. I was having a few drinks, enjoying a, a good show. And so it was cool. Yeah, yeah. And then like, you know, a few months later, I pop up and then just came to grind and wanted to hang out. It was funny, too, because uh, O'Shea Edwards was the reason why I started paying attention to grind. And yeah. um, because he's, a, he's well, he's like one of my mentors. I guess we'll put it that way. Uh, but he was like, yeah, bro, when you get to Massachusetts, the first place you got to go to is Grind because Grind is crazy. It's a lot of fun. And I was like, OK, cool. And then I, I popped up and then we met again and then we started talking. And I think from there, it's just like, you know, acquaintanceships. We've been we've been chatting it up and stuff and yeah, like, yeah. Getting, getting to know each other a little bit. It's been cool, man. And, and to watch you kind of do your thing. And that's why I guess for me, like seeing you at the open and seeing what happened, like just devastated me man i was like bro, yeah, that yeah. sucks yeah man that was a, a setback for sure but i think it was just life trying to tell me to slow down because i've been doing this for like 12 years straight uh other than when covid happened i took that year off but i've been doing it for 12 years straight so i was getting burnt out mentally but i was still trying to push through but you know life gives you fucking uh oh sorry life gives you kind of Life gives you fucking lemon. It's cool. You okay, can yeah. Life, yeah. Life, like, life kind of sets you down sometimes. It goes, hey, man, you got to just chill out for a little bit and, you know, get your shit right. So it sucks that it happened. Uh, I hate that it happened in front of people. It was a little embarrassing, but it's okay. I'm all right. Um, I know it sounds weird, but I'm happy that it happened uh, where it happened because I was surrounded by a lot of friends and people that gave a fuck about me. Um, uh, like I said, workers and also fans. <clears throat> so it wasn't like um like I was alone in in the situation, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I think that's like the most important part too is that you want to make sure that like you you it's it's like you said, like it was it was cool because like you have a lot of people who care about you and love you and and show you support like when you're when you're down, right? Cuz I know like I got injured. Um it might happen in the weirdest way, dude. Like it, and I'm going to be honest, at least you were like in a match and that shit was cool and even yeah. the move looked cool. But like I did a three quarter roll and tore my abdomen, and I was yeah. out for eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. Doing a quarter roll is crazy. Doing a quarter roll, and it tore my abdomen, and like I remember, like I was like, "Bro, this sucks." I was like, I couldn't sit down, I couldn't stand up, like I couldn't really walk well, like I was, yeah. and I was in a lot of pain. And uh, I get cramps in my abs, but I've never, I can't imagine getting that shit torn up like that. Mm-hmm. Damn, but you good now? Like everything is yeah, cool? so it you happened. So crazy enough, right? The year you took off in 2020, that's when I started wrestling, when I started professionally wrestling uh in training. Okay. And then yeah, and then like I'm like three weeks from like making my debut in front of a live crowd and tear my abdomen. <laughs> Damn, bro. What a what a, that's fucked up. <laughs> It led it led such down a crazy road, right? Because like I tear my abdomen, 
I'm out for like, and I thought I was out for like, I, I was like, and, and, and I thought I was just done. Right. Cause I was like, listen, COVID, like I started pro wrestling in January of 2020 COVID right. happens. Uh-oh. I come back. I have a setback because let's be real. Like I hadn't been training for like two months. Right. Cause right, March, right. April, May, right. Come in May. And then, I'm like, all right, so I start training, getting a little bit better. I can put these practice matches together. I can have some fun. And then uh, August happens, I tear my abdomen. I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe the world is telling me, like, I should chill the fuck out and not do anything. And uh, so I was like, whatever. And then so I meet with the surgeon. He was like, dude, you don't. there's nothing wrong. He's like, you have a tear, right? It's going to take some time to, time to heal, but you don't have a hernia or nothing. You don't got to worry about any surgery. Just, you know go he's like just work out strengthen up the abdomen and wall again and then just hit it like you mean it and i was like all right cool so he gave me the clear and then like three weeks later i was in a ring bumping and then like two weeks later i was back in front of the crowd i was supposed to be in front of oh, debuting good. and so good, 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 good. yeah so then and then i think when i wrestled like four matches in 2020 which was fine because one of those matches was against darius carter so i, I couldn't even be mad about where i was and then after that uh yeah and then 2021 i started wrestling again in like may like in front of crowds and stuff and then just like getting after it that's good man hell yeah i'm happy i'm happy that you're like it wasn't anything too like serious i mean any injury is serious but yeah the fact that it wasn't too serious where it didn't need surgery or anything like that just a little bit of time to like get your mind right and then you're back into it and you're like all right cool let's let's get back on the grind so that's good man hell yeah yeah my training was thrown off because like i had let's say like i had tore my abdomen on a saturday Mm-hmm. And that Sunday, I came back up to training, and oh. I just sat down next to him. I grabbed my notebook, I opened it up, and I just started oh, writing notes. That's dope, actually. I, I I used to do that back in it way back in the day when I first like started. <laughs> I used to like not that if I was hurt or anything, or if I was like banged up, like an ankle or whatever, I couldn't do it. I would always like sit in training and just listen or or watch everyone do it sometimes i'll try to help at the time they were just like ah shut up greenhorn like go sit down which is you know fair but uh, i feel like that's how i learned a lot was is like just uh sitting there shutting up and and watching and listening yeah and i came up with like a bunch of the spots that i, I still use now like just that week that that was like first four weeks of just like sitting down and just paying attention to drills and stuff like that and just writing down everything and learning and then developing my character side of stuff like it all came like it was cool man to be able to sit back and just focus on like how i can do everything yeah. and, and build the world up because that was i think that's what was the most important part about wrestling is like yeah you're going to learn moves and you're going to learn like drills and stuff like that you're going to work on your conditioning and stuff but the one thing that people really don't work on is their character side and yeah. you have to set the time to decide to figure out how your world is built so that you can make it something no, and I was, I it, that was worked trying to stand out from the crowd of everyone doing the same thing it's not a bad thing i'm not saying it's a problem but <clears throat> if you have a character and you know your character and you know the story behind it it's easier when people ask you all right so what's your character oh it's just me turned up it's like no nah, like no nah, for real like you know i i think a lot of the uh best wrestlers are the ones that have not characters but understand who they are either they are or their characters not just pretending to be a wrestler pretending to be you know something that they're uh not that they actually believe in like whatever they're a fireman or a firefighter and they're actually fighting fires on monday through thursday and then they're here on the weekend to like you know fight the the bad man whatever the fuck is going on (laughs) (laughs) they're here to put out the flames of the heel you know what i mean (laughs) like that (laughs) it's one of those things man like uh and uh, i remember i saw it in a tweet that and I, it was funny you said the, the character thing about me, me turning up to 11 I saw a tweet and i forgot who tweeted it out but it was like uh if your character is you turned up to 11 it's a boring character and i was like oh, no because i'm that guy <laughs> i saw that shit too i mean it's it sucks because it's just, it, it's such a basic response to a question that a lot of people don't really know the answer to, and there's nothing wrong with that. If if that's your character, it's fucked up to be like, oh, that shit's boring. If you're a boring guy, then fuck, that's what it is, or a boring person. It just kind of is what it is. But like, I'm my my character is me turned up. You know what I mean? Like the only difference is I'm not drinking while I'm wrestling. But like a lot of the times, like what you see in the ring is kind of what you see on the outside. I talk a lot of shit. I do my thing. I do like 
random ass parts of athleticism and like I'm chilling, like you know what I mean? So that's what I try to tell people. I'm like, yo, like Red Dog, Red Dog the character, right? Is um he it's it's me, but I'm I'm loud, I'm way more loud, way more obnoxious in a ring. And like it drives people crazy, and that's what I do. Like I'm on the outside, so when you meet me in real life, I'm still obnoxious, just not as obnoxious <laughs> as I am when I'm in the room. Yeah, that's funny. Because yeah, yeah. I, 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 man, I, it was funny because like I wanted. So it's funny. I don't like. How did you? How did you develop your your character? Like when you say you turned it up to eleven, like what were like some things that made you like? All right, I'm gonna. I'll pull this aspect of me out or I'll do this and I'll, I'll turn that up. Just comfortability of um, my wrestling, I guess you can say, like what I could bring to the table. Um, so I, like I said, I've been doing it for about 12 years. And in that first, obviously, even to this day, uh, you're still trying to work on it. Like that first five years, I was like really trying to like, make it to like i think it was ring of honor at the time i think i was trying to make it to ring of honor and tna or yeah tna at the time so i was like trying to be that i was trying to be ring of honor style the impact style i was trying to do that so much and i was looking around seeing that everyone's doing the exact same thing so why am i gonna stand out so i'm very terrible with promos like i'm not good at them uh, but I can talk to people. I can like, you know, shit talk and whatever. Um, so anytime they gave me a microphone, I'll be like, I just do it in the ring because I feel like if I'm talking to people, I'll be fine. I can kind of get my personality out instead of talking to a camera when the red dot being scary, everyone going, Shh, shut up. He's going to talk. And just looking at you, it's like, it scares the fuck out of me. But if everyone's in the room, I can go like, oh, fucking you over there and da, 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 whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's easier for me. So getting comfortable with talking in front of a crowd, wrestling in front of a crowd. And at the same time, um, with those five years, I did, obviously I didn't make it. I didn't even get like a trial or anything. Then it became more of like, not like I don't give a fuck, but like, ah, whatever, like, it, maybe it's not in the cards for me. So let me just do me. I'm going to do what I want to do and try what I want to try. And if I look stupid, it's fine. It's not like, it's not like they're going to pick me up. Right. You know what I mean? So I just kind of was like, it's a lot, a lot of trial and error. But um, having fun with what I was doing at the time, was to me, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to try to do it you know, the best or at least – for me to make it fun, if that makes any sense. Yeah. That was it. And just little sprinkles of things. Shit, man. I used to wrestle in front of like five people you know, at Lucha shows. I used to wrestle in front of, you know, not 500 people, but you know what I mean? A lot more people at uh, bigger events. And then it was just like, I would try shit at a Lucha show and, and it would get like a big response. And I would try it at the bigger show and it wouldn't get a response. And I would try, you know, just trying different shit but it was just i was having fun I was having a lot of fun just throwing shit out the wall and just trying shit and like if it if it works it works if it doesn't whatever who cares like the sweet daddy name that shit was like it was an accident you know what i mean but it was like funny like i i was drinking a lot and uh i was very my self-esteem is very low but when i drink i'm like very much like hell yeah you know what i mean i'm, I'm more confident than ever and uh it's not a good thing i'm not promoting drinking at all um <laughs> not at all but uh i used to call myself fat like oh i'm fat i'm getting fat i'm getting fat and then my lady's like no nah, you thick and i was like i'm thick with three c's though right hell yeah i'm thick daddy blah 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 and it's just a funny ass name that stuck every time i got drunk and i would talk shit saying that shit and then i made the shirt of it uh, because I was being a bad guy um, in Tampa, Florida, and someone came up to me and was like, "Yeah, I fuck, I like that name. Are you selling those shirts?" And I was like, "No, that's stupid. Who would want this shirt?" Because it was just, it's just. A, I wish I had it around me. It's a black shirt, and all it says is "Thick Daddy" on it. That's it. And I just like jokingly made like five shirts, and then the bitches sold out quick. And then I made more, and fuck, man, the rest is history. I've been rocking with the name but you never know what's gonna stick man you know like i could have said that shit no one could have ate it up and then it would have just been like okay you know on to the next whatever it is thing 
Yeah. I think what's funny is like we we find our nicknames like in like the craziest times or you find the things that you like doing like in the in the craziest times, right? So like yeah. for me, right? Like I have always been like even when I was in the military, right? I've always been like the dude who was just kind of like just very brash, quick-witted, like people my my call sign in the military was Red Dog up until the point that I got out. And when I got out, uh, my call sign had changed to Punches and Bunches, right? right? And the reason why they called me Punches and Bunches was because, like, when people were talking shit, I was hitting comeback, like, back after back after back after back after back. It was like, yo, I was I was five piecing dudes up nice. with like, just wordplay. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. so my boss, he hated it. He hated talking to me because he was like, you know, he'd be like, Miller, what do you think you're doing today? I was like, honestly, sir, uh, I don't know what you think you're doing or where you're talking, but that F key is something that you are missing because you need to fuck off with this situation. And he's just like, damn. He's like, what's wrong with you today? I was like, oh, nothing, sir. I'm just letting you know. Like, And I just go through and start rattling stuff off. And he hated it. So he started referring to me as punches and bunches. And then um, so I caught on and I left. And when I got out of the military and I was like, yo, figure out this life thing. Eventually, I got into pro wrestling, and I thought your trainer gave you your character. So I was like, yeah, I was in the military, and blah, blah, blah. And my trainer was like, oh, well, you can be a serious mercenary. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll try. And then, like, six <laughs> months of six months of giving it a go, bro, I was like, it was getting over. But, like, yeah. people were like, I don't really know. It's another, it's another soldier, another mm -hmm. military guy that's out there trying to be, like, the tough guy. So I was like, yo, let me break this whole thing up. And Deadpool had just came out. And obviously the Merc with the mouth has like something to say. And I was like, yo, that's me. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I was like, I'm, I'm trying way too hard to be serious when I'm, I'm not that guy. Yeah. And, uh, so I was like, let me, let me, let me take this. And then a little bit of like uh doc holiday. And at the time I was like, let me figure out how I can spin this all around. And so I started playing with ideas and, and coming up with the stuff. And now like red dog, like I, so it's funny. Cause you say like, you like doing live promos. I don't like doing live promos, but I love doing promo videos. Like I love yeah. being able to talk in front of a camera. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. That's always been my kryptonite is, is always the promos. Like, it's funny. I'll, I'll cut a promo here with my girl, like recording the person I'm supposed to be the most comfortable with in the world. And I'd be like, nah, I can't say that or blah, blah, blah. Or I finally cut it down. Or I finally get a promo. Then I watch it. I'm all like, Fuck no, bro. That shit looks stupid. No, I delete that <laughs> shit. I ain't saying nothing. But I know that that's a big part of this wrestling thing. You know what I mean? Like, you could do everything you done when you're in the ring, but you can't talk to people. You ain't going far, you know? No, it's, it's one of those things. So, like, for, for me, because I understood, like, I understood the way I wanted to take Red Dog and where I wanted to put him. And I was like, yo, what if we just did promos? Like, but just, like, everything was different. Like, it wouldn't have to be like standing in front of a green screen or standing in front of like this right. place. Like it's, it's just me. And so like started thinking of like creative ways to do stuff. So I remember I did a promo as like with a laugh track in the background. <laughs> the crowd was just getting it. Like it was ridiculous, man. That's like, scary. so I'm doing like a Disney promo talking about like remember, remembering things that happened to me from somebody else previously. Uh, I did one as, uh, this is my favorite one, and full transparency. If anybody ever asked, this is my favorite promo that I've ever done. Um, so the backstory is, I had this dog named Duke, and uh, Duke was with me for like 13 years, right? So he passed away. So I had him drawn on a T-shirt. So I took the drawing character, and I added him to, I added him to um, my T-shirt collection, but I added him in the video too. So I had this cartoon version of my dog, and I made it like blue from like Blue's Clues. Oh, that's and cool. then, like, and so, like, we were trying to figure out who my opponent was for this uh, this wrestling event, and like, I did all the sound effects in the background. So, like, if you see him, like, hi, do you guys see Duke anywhere? And it's like, bow, bow, and then, like Duke uh, pops that's up. Hilarious. That's cool. That's clever as fuck, though. And I was like, see, shit like that. I, I'm not clever with like that. I'm not. I can't. I'm more clever with like in the ring of how to hurt people. <laughs> that's that, cool. I, I think it comes, it's important though, like to have both sides. Cause like for me, I'll be honest, man, I watch people do like stuff on, um, and wrestling shows and I'm like, oh, actually, that's kind of cool. I, I should, I should think about a way to like include something similar to me to do uh, that. Yeah. Cause I didn't think about it. No, no, man. I, I, I learned quick 
that I can't really be doing a lot of shit like that. I, when I was younger and a lot smaller, uh, skinnier, I would say, uh, PWG was around the corner from where we where I used to live at. So I used to go there often, and I would see guys like Ricochet and Will Ospreay and, and all these guys, and I'd be like, man, bro, I can't do none of that shit. Like, how am I supposed to be flipping like that and yada, yada, yada? And then one of my uh, one of my OGs when I was coming up, he was telling me because there's this guy named uh, Ryan Taylor. He he was uh, from my old school, the EWF School of Hard Knocks out there in San Bernardino. That's out. He came out of there, then he went to Ring of Honor, I believe, and then he went to WWE as Russ Taylor. But I remember wanting to be him so bad because I thought he was, like, fantastic. Him, TJ Perkins, I wanted to be that so bad, but I just could not do it. I couldn't look like them. I couldn't move like them. I couldn't. And my OG gave me the best advice that I, I tell people all the time now. Don't try to be the next Ryan Taylor. Just be the next you. Be the best you. Just do you and, you know what I mean? Like, maybe you'll get there, maybe you won't, whatever. But at least you did it your way, the way you wanted to as you. And, uh, yeah, ever since then, I'd be like, shit, bro, I can't be doing moon faults and all this other shit. The best I give you is a cartwheel. And even hey. that looks kind of sloppy, but <laughs> people react to it, so fuck it. <laughs> hey, it, it, but it's, it's different, though. What's funny is, like, when you see, like, not that I would put this out there, right? But you see smaller people, like, you kind of expect them to, like, because that's the way we got brought up, right? We get raised right. into this generation of wrestling that you're a smaller guy. We expect to see you jump off the top ropes. If you're a bigger guy, you're really not expected to kind of go off the top rope yeah. or, or whatever. But when you watch a guy, like, let's be real, like Ivar, right? From oh, the, yeah, well, yeah, Viking yeah. Raiders, right? I'm or War guy. Machine, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Um, but when you see him do a cartwheel, everybody pops. Every single you know it's coming, and he does. And you're like, oh, that was so yeah, cool. Yeah, that dude is dope. <laughs> he's cool, peeps too. Yeah, he's yeah. So that's, what so he, for, that's why I like big guy wrestling now. Like I wasn't, it wasn't like I wasn't a fan of it back in the day, but I just started paying attention more of it, uh, especially now that I'm kind of down and hurt. It's kind of like I just been watching wrestling as a, a fan again instead of like treating it like either competition or like oh man i gotta do better than that now i'm just like i see people doing shit and i get super pumped about it like all the dudes that blitzkrieg pro all the people that fucking grind like that shit makes me happy wrestling open beyond everywhere is like i'm watching it as a fan and going hell yeah man like this kid's gonna make it that person's gonna make it that person's already a big star and it's cool it's cool seeing shit like that yeah, I, I get hyped. I know, like, for me, whenever I get to watch the open and just chill and just kind of, like, shut my brain off and see everybody move, I'm like, bro, this is cool. Yeah. Actually, I, <laughs> full transparency, I was, when we were at Grind uh, at the last show and main event Miracle Generation were going back and forth, uh, I, I, yeah, listen, man, when Dustin pulled the ref out, I popped. Full <laughs> transparency. I legit thought the match was over, and then to see that happen, I was like, Oh, that that's caught me so yeah. off guard. I was so wrapped in the match that when it happened, I was like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that shit is cool. Yeah, shit, see, shit like that, man. Like, and then it sucks too. Well, it's just whatever. It doesn't really matter. Like, it's, it, I was going to say, it, it like, we, we forget that when we're in it, when we're wrestling, we forget about that shit. Like, at the end of the day, they're all our homies. You know what I mean? Like, like congratulate your homie for doing like a good spot. I do that shit. I, don't, I probably sound so fucking annoying to some of these guys. I'd be like running up to them and I'm like, dude, you fucking killed it. You did great. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, one of my favorite wrestlers is my best friend, is uh, Tyler Bateman. And he debuted for Grind. And uh, fucking, when I saw that match, it was like both my homies, him and Rip, going at it, doing what they do best. And I was over there on the side just like, yeah, yeah. I was I was popping for it, man, because I love I love seeing shit like that, and I also love seeing like good dudes get their like or good people get their come up. You know what I mean? And get their yeah. love, and get their flowers and shit like that. They like I don't know. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you forget. Like I said, I've been doing it for a while, and like you just kind of go. You go with the motion. You don't you don't stop sometimes and like realize what's happening or whatever the case is. But like. You just kind of go with the motion, but it's cool to like, like I said, it's like that I got hurt, but it's cool to like step back, look at everyone and be like, man, bro, I didn't know you do shit like this. Or I forgot that you do it like that because I'm so focused on 
what I'm doing and then the next thing and so on, you know? Yeah, it was one of those things where, like, um, I, I remember, like, I see other people do, like, I love hitting the spine buster, right? Mm. And to watch, um, to watch some of these guys do, like, a pull, like, I think, I think it's Des, Des Cole, uh, Desmond Cole does it, right, where he'll pull a dude right up off the floor and catch him, and then he hits him with, like, Giranagi, and I'm like, bruh. I was like, why didn't I think about doing something like that? <laughs> yeah. And I've seen other people hit, like, I got inspired by someone hitting a, a spine buster a different way that I have i haven't seen. I thought about it. I was like, yo, I could actually do that same style, but change it up a little bit and do this yeah. whole thing I was thinking about. And so it's, it's one of those crazy parts where it's like you see people and then they inspire you to want to do your move, but then, like, to step it up another level. And so I was like... I was all excited because, like, I like when I would do. I was such a basic dude, when, and I say that lovingly, right? Don't get pissy. No, no, but right. like, people would throw like a clothesline. I would duck underneath. I'd pick them up and slam them with a spine buster, and, and it would pop, right? But now, like, I'm like, bro, but what if I did it this way? And I'm like, what if I did it this way? And now I'm all playing with the ideas. I'm like, yo, know, we've got like eight different ways to hit the spine buster. It all started because one person did one move, and I was like that's cool i cannot actually i like that flair so i was like let me let me substitute that into my stuff too so i feel where you're coming from when you're like watching you're you're popping for people's stuff and you're like i'm gonna have to like give kudos to all these guys because it was i was at i'll give another example right so i was at um this place called swa in shady grove pennsylvania right Mm -hmm. um and this is actually back in november right so i it's like my return to SWA because I had moved from Maryland to Massachusetts. Okay. So it's my return back there and my song starts playing. The crowd gets hyped. Right. And I just start going crazy, just bumping with the beat. Right. I go back and watch the match. I watch the replay. Right. It totally looked like I, w- I just peeled it right from Desmond <laughs> because I was like the crowd's getting into it I'm getting into it like they're feeding me I'm like bro I was like so I walked right up to him I was like bro listen uh I was at a show uh thanks to you like I've now just <laughs> uh, <laughs> expecting me to do this now <laughs> that's funny yeah man that, sometimes, I mean you get inspired by what you see and who you see so I can see that like yeah. I can see why that happened that's funny though Yo, so <coughs> I I kind of feel like I know the answer to this, but I'm just gonna hear. Maybe you have one different one. But what's the what's the worst bump you've taken? Uh, the worst bump. Room? Yeah. Fuck. That's hard, bro. I don't. Now I'm trying to remember all the bumps I've taken. <laughs> I can't recall like the worst bump. I do know that I hate taking like stomach bumps. <laughs> so like anything that like I land on my stomach, I absolutely fucking despise. And I'm talking about anything, a drop toe hole, a fucking trip, any anything that revolves around me landing on my tummy, I fucking hate it, bro. <laughs> but nothing ne- nothing that not a bump that I'm all like I'm always down to take stupid ass bumps either way. Damn, I'm trying to think. No, nah, anything on the stomach, that's it. Do you have one? Oh yeah, I took one that was uh oh man, so this was February. I I, I think I told this a few times. It was February of 2020, and I had just been training for like maybe like two or three weeks, right? Maybe mm-hmm. it might have been four or five weeks. Um and I jumped off the top rope thinking I could do a Kira Tozawa's giant senton. Oh, senton. Onto oh. yeah, onto uh some crash pads, and it was 30 degrees outside. And uh, yeah, so, you know, when the ring freezes, you're not bumping and it's not good. And I learned that lesson and it oh, uh, that sounds fucking terrible. Bro. Yeah, so I hit that ground and all the air in my lungs left. And my trainer looked at me boldly and said, did we learn something today? I was like, yeah, don't do this again. <laughs> yeah, hell no. Nah. See, shit like that, bro. I, I, no, nah, I can't. I, I used to I used to dive over the top rope like a helo or whatever, and uh, I remember calling it one time on one person. I would always used to do it on a group of people. I did it, I called it once on one person. I like tripped, so I didn't get the dive off, but I stopped at the ropes and I did a little house show dive, and I was like, I think that's my sign not to do it. 
right? <laughs> so the next show, I remember, because we used to run pretty fr- frequently. The next show, I remember calling the spot on two people. And the ma- I think we were like fourth match, but the second match had a big dive on it. Tell me why this dude went over the top like a helo and no one caught his ass and he hit the ground. So then I was like, ooh, yeah, not diving anymore. Fuck all that. Because I don't want to dive and hit the ground like that. That's always <laughs> yeah. my fear. You're going this way, then you tuck, and you don't see anything anymore. And then you're hoping to feel bodies and you just feel pop on the fucking cement. Nah, I'm cool. Yeah. So I, I the first So the first dive I ever hit in a wrestling match was at a bar show in D.C. Mm-hmm. And it was like three years after I had started. And it's only because uh, <laughs> the guys I was working, like, I trusted them. Yeah. But I still didn't want to dive. They're like, yo, dive through the middle rope. I'm like, no, I, like, I don't dive. They're like, but this is a lucha show, and you got to do some lucha shit. So hit me with this head scissor, and then do a dive. <laughs> it was yeah. like, okay. I had no faith, bro. Like, I was, I was like, I'm going to die. And then they caught me, right? And then they threw me back into the ring. And then that's, like, where the face got hurt. But I was like... Bro, I was like, I was not doing this. Yeah. And even when I do, when I do want to go out for a dive and stuff, like, no, bro, I'm not diving through the ropes. I'll jump over the top rope and then jump out to the ring. Like, and I yell it out loud to you. I'm like, catch me. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. That's like, tight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I, 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 listen, like, I can, I can trust so many people, but I'm, I'm just not willing to do it. No, I, I fucking <laughs> feel you. Even, I, I could trust you with my life. I don't mean I trust myself with this dive. <laughs> like, fuck that. Yeah. No, I feel you, bro. Uh yeah, I took that uh at that bump and then actually recently I did a shotgun drop kick off the second rope and concussed myself. It was great. Damn yeah. bro, how you be getting hurt like that? Yo, what happened? It, you just you just launched back? Yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly what happened. Oh. I threw myself off, went to like just power through with the kick, and I thought I took my chin hard enough, and I guess I hit pretty high and I just smacked my head and I was just yeah, I don't mean to laugh, bro. That shit crazy. Go I, ahead. Three I to five seconds of being out. <laughs> you said thirty-five. Three to five. Three to five seconds. Oh shit! And you can, like, hey, you know what? I can send you. I can send you the. I can send you the clip. Yeah, and no, yeah, please do so. You'll see me like get up and like react when the crowd started clapping. That's when I like started coming to. Really? Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, I heard the crowd clapping, and I was like, all right, all right, we. Get, all right, we have the comeback spot. I was like, but I'm, I, I told myself, like, you're fucked up. Like, tell your opponent or tell the ref that you're messed up, right? So, like, my opponent came walking to me, and I was supposed to hit him with a clothesline, and I put my hand on his shoulder, and he bumped. <laughs> I was like, bro, that's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I picked him up, and he's like, yo, do something. I was like, I'm loopy right now, bro. I, I, and this is why I was at, I was, I knew where I was at this point. When he bumped, I knew where I was, and I was like, listen, I'm loopy. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Talk to me. He's like, all right, give me three shots and then pick me up like a power slam. I was like, all right, bet. So I give him three shots. I pick him up. He throws me into a buckle. And then he's like, just stay here. And that's where I stay for the rest of the match as the rest of the match finished. <laughs> like, yeah, I was out. <laughs> Your own offensive move is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Damn, bro. Well, I'm glad you're straight. Damn, bro, you got to gotta start wearing a helmet out there. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's it's not fair, man. I, I I knocked the air out of me doing. And the thing was, I did that senton, right? Knocked the air out of me. I was like, all right, that's that's bad. I get concussed doing a drop kick, and then I tear my abdomen. I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> Damn, bro, fuck. Five years, shit. man. Four, well, I mean, four years. Four years. Four years in the business, and you already well. Yeah. I'm like, Fuck it. You, get, you get the injuries out early, so that way you can have a longer career. Yeah. Wow, you smart. You smart. Try, try to work. I see what, you what, what things messed me up last time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That. All right, don't do that one. Don't do this one. <laughs> Fuck uh, you. Right Fight on that. You just do all those moves that hurt you. And you just right. Then I learn. I'm like, yo, don't do that. Don't do that again. Don't do this one. <laughs> uh, yo, uh, so let me ask you this last question before we jump into my favorite part of the Three Count Podcast, right? Uh, what's one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn being in the ring? Hardest lessons? Yeah. Dang. Heavy question. Yeah, that's a that's a loaded one. But what do you mean by that though? Like So like as you like journey through, man, right? Like what's one of those lessons that you just you had to figure out you learned a hard way and you were just like, damn, bro, like that's kind of a tough lesson. Like I give you an example, right? For me, um 
it's patience, right? Like learning patience. Like I, I like to think that I'm a patient person. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I got injured, right, I had to really like be patient, let myself heal up, right? And then I got to press forward with the rest of what I wanted to do for, you know, I was out for like eight to, eight to 10 weeks. This last run, right, of since I moved up here, right? It's full transparency, right? And so you guys can check this out too. Uh, I moved up here in June of 2023. Uh, in July, I started helping out with Beyond. Um, that's and then shortly after that, I had to match with Ray Jazz, right? Um, uh, for the for the summer, um, I forget the New Jersey the Jersey Open. Um, and then I had another match after that. I had a practice match at Beyond. And then just this huge dry spell, like nothing. And then I wrestled at uh, SWA. I worked a squash match with Brian Milanis. Okay. And then I worked um, at the Wrestling Independent on December 2nd. And that was the last time I worked, right? And so full transparency, right? We go fast forward. This is the 23rd of January. So like these six matches over like six months seven months it's and it's like it's a it's a and i know that there's things that are coming like i've been you know working trying to put myself in a better position but is that patience i think it's like bro like you have to remember like you got to relax sometimes you know you're working you go to these shows you're like helping out you just have to be patient you have to understand that like you know there's some places you're just not meant for and some places like you just kind of kind of wait. They're going to either write a storyline for you, write you into a storyline, or yeah. something's going to happen. So no. just one of those things. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I, well, okay. So for me, then, it's uh, the biggest lesson I learned is, like, not everyone's going to fuck with you. You know what I mean? Not everyone's going to like you. You can't, ha- you can't make everyone like you. And I mean by, like, in ring, out of the ring. You know what I mean? Like in the locker room, like on social media, fucking real life, whatever the fuck you want to call wrestling. Like, not everyone's going to like you. You know what I mean? I, I used to try very hard for everyone to like me. I used to try very hard for promoters to like me because then I could get booked. But then I started, like, I never, I've never was one to, like, be a kiss ass. But, like, I can feel myself becoming that on accident just because I just wanted to like please like the the promoters so that I can work their shows. But then it's like, what the fuck am I doing this? This ain't me, this ain't right, you know, whatever. So like now I'm like, I like to think I'm a okay human. I'm an okay guy. Like anyone could come up to me and talk to me. It doesn't matter whatever you feel or think, like you can come up to me and talk to me. I, I'm I'm very much approachable. But I'm me all the time. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing me. Like, do I want everyone to like me? Is that a fucking problem? Of course it is. But that's that's for another conversation. Uh, Do I want everyone to like me? Yes. Uh, Do I understand that not everyone's going to like me? Of course. There's a lot of times where I go into, whether it be locker room or or at shows that I'm on, I'm just kind of chilling. And I feel like people look at me sideways, but I also, like, got to remember, not everyone knows who I am or not everyone knows me. Um, and that's all right. And even if you do know me, you don't have to fucking like me. You know what I mean? And I like that was a big problem I had in the first few uh, years of wrestling. And I still kind of have it now. But at the end of the day, I I'm just going to be me and do me like if you look for one of your shows, I'm going to treat it like it's the biggest thing in the world because it is the biggest thing in the world for me to me. But I'm not going to kiss your ass and tell you lies i'm going to tell you the truth and i'm going to be honest with you and i'm going to be me i'm going to go in there and whatever the job is i'm going to you know do the best that i can to get my opponent over the match over myself over and have this crowd these fans that paid money to see us fucking go like damn that dude was dope or that match was fucking sick yada 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 and i'm gonna sell try to sell my merch but i'm also gonna party i'm also gonna chill and drink i'm gonna bullshit with you i'm gonna like you know what I mean? Try to fucking sell my t-shirts. I'm going to try to sell whatever the fuck it is. I'm going to talk to you. I think I, I sound funny to say it like that. I have a lot of fans that are friends more than probably wrestlers as friends, if that makes any fucking sense. But it's just kind of the person I am. And like, 
that's like a big lesson that I felt and I still practice it to this day where understanding like not everyone's going to like you whether it be wrestling or or you as a person and that's all right it, there it's not it it's okay because the people that do like you and do fuck with you they like you because it's you not because oh I like the thick daddy like no I like Andy Brown yeah you know, does that make any sense it makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing though is that like you like you have like this energy that you put out that like it is genuine you know what I mean and I think that's that that's a big thing to like have in life right that's something that I pride myself on is that like the guy that you are in the ring the guy that you are at well like when I'm in the ring obviously I'm like cranked up right I we've already right. talked about that at the beginning of the show so if you missed it go back rewind um you can find that all again but i think the biggest thing is like when you're out of the ring you're you know out of like a show or you're in like the grocery store just be you because like at the end of the day people are gonna fuck with you they you know it's it something that so my dad like used to sell cars for the mm. longest time but he used to tell me all the time man he's like people don't people don't buy a product they buy you they like you they don't they don't care like listen they can go to any dealership to buy a fucking chevy he's like he's like at the end of the day they come buy from you because they like you i think it's very important was that did you freeze no i'm good i'm good oh there you are i was gonna say i just said it's that comfortability they're just comfortable with you because of the way you're talking to them treating them and shit like that yeah i feel that that's cool that's good Yo, so let's jump into my favorite segment of the Three Count Podcast. This is the Three Count Podcast, 10 Count Questions, and this is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. So whatever your answer is, that's your answer. Damn. Uh, I'm terrible at shit like this. Because then my brain goes, hold on, go back to that one. I got another <laughs> one. Yeah, it's bad. But all right, let's go. I love it. So we're going to put on an imagine timer for added pressure. Damn. Bing. And in the words of Mike Goldberg, here we go. SmackDown or Raw? Oh, SmackDown. Favorite movie? Damn, we just talked about this the other day. Uh, Friday. Yes. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation all day, dude. Favorite actor? Oh, shit. I don't think I have one. I'm just going to go with Denzel Washington. That's great. Apple or Android? You said Apple what? Apple or Android? Uh, damn, Apple. I was looking at my phone to make sure I had it right. <laughs> Favorite cartoon? Um, uh, what's a uh, regular show? Okay, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Avengers or Justice League? Oh, I like Avengers, bro. I'm a, all right, damn, I like Avengers, I, I but I like The Flash, but Avengers, okay. Uh, favorite podcast? Damn. The three count. That's right. <laughs> the, best, the best of all time. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. Nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Uh, Tyler Bateman. Let's go. The goddamn man himself. I'm in. Uh, last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show. Favorite curse word? Oh, shit. Uh, I say this shit, but I don't even think it's a curse word. I say nigga a lot. But I don't think it's a curse word. So I'm just going to go with bitch. Bitch is like hilarious to me, bro. Because like you could combo it up. But like sometimes like someone will be saying some crazy shit to you and you just be like, bitch. You know what I mean? It's just like hilarious to me. But Any know, curse word, uh, any curse word that's versatile where you can just like use it and it means something different in the context of using it is the greatest to me. That's what I'm saying. I love shit I love like that. I'm, I'm very, I, I feel like I'm very creative. With a lot of wordplay, I say, I don't know why. It's probably all the concussions I used to get. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, bitch might be my favorite word, bro. My favorite curse word. Yeah. I don't think the N word is a, is a curse word, though. I know. Well, of, for certain know, people, it's a forbidden word. For certain people, yeah. But so my fault, on that. You could, you could edit that shit. <laughs> nah, it's staying right there. <laughs> yeah, well, saying it's not the first time. Day. It's a full transparency. It's not the first time it's been set on this podcast. Oh, all right, that's yeah. tight, and I love that shit. <laughs> so, uh, and hey, don't don't go back and be like, hey, four hundred episodes. I want to see if like Red Dog ever said no. It's never happened. Okay, uh, never. Yeah, happened. I was gonna go back right now and be like, did he say that? Yeah, word? Did he say what? this? Who said this word? <laughs> like, just go listen. Hey, you know what? Go listen to all the episodes and figure it out yourself. Anyway, 
Those are okay. all my questions for you, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. So the last thing I need is for you to let all of our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Shit, bro. Nowhere. Don't look for me, man. Go look for us, other people. <laughs> nah, you can find me uh Instagram and X or Twitter, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh up Andy Brown. That's that's the name that they know cool about it. Um yeah, I just wear a sweater and just ask you to ask me questions. That's all I do on social media nowadays. I'm chilling, <laughs> bro. I'm chilling. <laughs> but well, uh, you know what that means. He's he's giving you his handles, he told you where you can find him. So what does that mean? It means we're gonna do like our favorite part of a wrestling match. Take this home. Because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain to go wrestling. And like always, right, as your shirt, but it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So you see him right there, the thick daddy himself, Andy Brown. You guys know what that means. Tune in to the next episode and be there, or you're literally subscribing to our YouTube channel. You're following us on Spotify. You're listening to us on Amazon Music because we're there, too. Or you're even checking us out on iHeartRadio or whatever that jingle is that they do. <laughs> You're even buying our merch on ProWrestlingTees.com or even on ForYourWear.com. You're telling your friends about us. You're telling your dad about us. You're telling your dogs about us. You're telling your mom about us. You're telling your enemies about us because we love haters too. So yeah. you're doing all this stuff. Subscribe to all of our social media sites or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to end. You're waiting for the outro and you're choosing another episode to listen to. Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And what we need from you guys is to kind of show us some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast, go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep it on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, between time, love y'all.